So I just finished ripping this thing off. Carbon fiber cover was on the rear glass, so you couldn't see out the back. And he said, get this shit out of here. So, well, there you go. What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project. This is just sort of like an interlude video uh, because last minute I had this car come into the shop and not that I'm immersed in a number of other projects, but sometimes we got to make room. There's always a new experience. Every time you have a new Fox in the shop, there's always something different about it. This one is no exception to that rule. So the owner of this car came by the shop not too long ago and uh, completely unrelated to Fox bodies. And he saw all the Fox bodies around and um, said, oh yeah, I got this black notch. Would you guys be uh, interested in doing some work on the clutch cable um, isn't working? I don't know if it snapped or seized or whatever. I said, sure, bring it. So here's the car. He bought it this way and he's hoping to change some things up. So if you look down on the ground here, you can see couple carbon fiber pieces. If you look behind me, carbon fiber rear quarter windows, carbon fiber gas tank cover, which I cannot say I agree with uh, cutting your factory uh, fuel door just to be able to stick or oh, glue that onto. Carbon fiber trunk lid, which you know, this is okay, I guess. Fitment isn't so good. I think this could actually be adjusted and fit a little bit better, but they do have a lock cylinder in there, so that's good. Carbon fiber hood. They've uh, painted this section and left the carbon fiber exposed there. So here's a look under the hood. You can see the car used to be red. That's fully exposed. I'm just going to go out on a limb and probably say, you know, uh, built 306 with uh, the Vortec. What do we got here? Got a V2 blower, bunch of MSD stuff. Got the distributor, got the coil, got the 6AL2 electronics. Let's look down here. Yeah, we got some aluminum heads down there. I don't know what the heads are. Um, you know, probably as a cam, Cobra intakes. We got braided lines that are run all the way back to the tank. I haven't heard the car run and it hasn't been driven because the uh, clutch cable is, um, I think it, uh, it's seized. I can't get it to move or do anything. So we're going to be swapping out this clutch cable and hopefully getting uh, the car back to drivable state. All right, I almost skipped over this. So I just finished ripping this thing off. So this carbon fiber cover um, was on the rear glass, so you couldn't see out the back. Uh, so the car had a rear view backup camera um, contraption that was all uh, wrapped around the rear view mirror. And he said, get this shit out of here. So, well, there you go. Getting that shit out of here for you. So the guy was pretty aggravated because he's like, yeah, every time I want to start the car, I have to hit this little button underneath the dash, which uh, was this guy here, a little override button. And, um, you know, I recently did the video on how to remove an unwanted alarm from your Fox body. And yet here's another one. So the reality is I've probably cut out five alarms this year, six, good portion of uh, just unwanted stuff, unnecessary stuff. And interestingly enough, I spoke about, you know, the brain and all of the main wiring typically being, you know, up underneath the uh, steering column here. Well, this one, it seems to be kind of running behind the radio. So just kind of following the wiring, it's going over to the passenger side there and I can see some wires moving down behind the radio. So we'll get there. All the same, the normal wires tapped in here. You're gonna see I have to uh, do some zip ties. See how this wire is loose. So I'll make sure that all this stuff is tie wrapped in. I need to reconnect the white with the pink, which is uh, your main starting wire. Uh, but gonna go ahead now, pull that uh, radio out and see what we got hiding behind there. Mm. 
Viper 900 plus model. So this is the other thing that always gets me about alarms when they print what each wire does on the back of them. I guess if you could find the brain box easy enough, you'd know what every wire does. So there's a whole rat's nest of wiring done on the speaker wiring front here. Um, I'm not commissioned to touch that. That can stay for another day. At least they did not cut the factory connectors, um, which is good. Just the rest of this wiring. Well, I'm not gonna criticize other people's work right now, but I wouldn't have done it like that. I might not have done it like that, but with that said, when this car was probably built, and you're talking about a $4,000 car at the time, well, you end up doing $4,000 kind of work. So it's all relative. I'm sure if this was a Ferrari, they wouldn't have wired stuff like that. is actually in really really nice shape you know luckily there was no damage done to the bottom side of the map pockets from getting caught in uh, the door jam area here on the doors opening and closing so other than some screws being loose and the interior being you know dirty overall it's actually in really good shape like the vents nothing's broken everything looks clean and tidy um, you know all the door sills are in good shape seats are in good shape you know, the belts, this is usually a telltale here, guys, is, you know, your belt use um, on both sides to kind of give you an idea of, you know, mileage on your Fox. And I've gone over all this stuff in previous videos, but it's just important to reiterate that, you know, whether your Fox has 50,000 miles on the odometer or maybe it's 150,000 miles, you can look at stuff and generally get an idea. Not to say a car with 150,000 miles couldn't have been extremely well kept and um, taken care of, but um, things like wear on the clutch pedal, brake pedal, the steering wheel, and um, you know the armrest pads will give you a really good idea. And these ones, it's like there was hardly ever a passenger in this car. So clearly there was some stuff sitting in that map pocket at one point, but um, other than that, uh, pretty clean. I think actually with maybe a nice cut and polish, well a wash to start, cut and polish, this paint will come up. There are a couple chips um, in certain areas here, you know, that are exposing that old original red. But, you know, everything opens and closes nice. Trim's in decent shape. I wonder what the quarter windows were like before they opted to put in these carbon fiber pieces. So I'm pretty sure the owner's probably going to go back to some original... Um, windows here now these are kind of interesting right because I've seen these um, painted in a way that looks like the uh, the factory windows and it really doesn't matter if this is a window or not like whoever is trying to look out these rear windows so I think there's some an, an opportunity with these you know I wouldn't run them on my car but you know you would get what would appear to be perfect moldings around the edges. So if you had those done in the satin black, you had this painted black like the glass, and then you got, you know, sort of the section of where the window is, the Mustang lettering down there, you'd probably be in pretty good shape. So we got our clutch cable here, brand new from Summit, as well as a quadrant, which is billet aluminum. Now, you probably didn't know, or it came as a kit. Um, he's already got a billet uh, quadrant in there. And he also had a adjuster, firewall adjuster on there as well. So at first I was wondering if maybe the cable popped off or any of those things, but like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure that the cable is seized. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we're not gonna be putting this guy back in. And the reason for that is because this clutch cable is adjustable down here on the clutch fork. So you can see this is all threaded. 
This will go onto the fork and we'll be able to adjust stuff down here and not have to worry about everything up at the firewall. So the one thing about these adjustable cables and uh, running a solid quadrant is that your cable is gonna stretch over time and you are gonna have to adjust it. It's not just in the beginning. Obviously you wanna have your pedal or your level of engagement where desired. Some people like it closer to the floor. Some people like it a little um, higher up. Um, but the stock quadrants actually have a self-adjusting mechanism on them with a bunch of teeth. And over time, um, it'll click um, forward to the point where, you know, the clutch is sort of happy. That's why stock clutches generally engage around the same spot. They can break over time. They can become a little brittle. They're a pain in the ass to get out. Unless you're really racing, I don't see the purpose of needing up to or needing to upgrade to one of these a normal cable and quadrant will work fine if your car is relatively stock or lightly modded um, in fact my supercharged stocker convertible it's still running stock quadrant and i think it has a center force clutch in it and i haven't had issues I actually i had an issue with the cable but i haven't had any issues with my quadrant so it's kind of uh, your thing of preference so just keep in mind that if you go to a solid quadrant um, you are going to need adjustability on your cable. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this guy through the firewall, um, get this hooked on to the quadrant, and then from there, um, we're going to have to get underneath the car and then get this guy hooked up onto the clutch fork. So what you want to do is make sure you have as much cable passed through the top side so that you can get it hooked on your quadrant easy enough, and then uh, you can pull it through. The main uh, trick of the game here is to keep enough tension uh, once this is on your quadrant, once it's hooked on there, um, so that it doesn't pop off on you when you're uh, trying to install the rest. So we'll just go in here, pass it through the hole. You can actually see the quadrant. If I was really good, I wonder if I can even hook it right on the quadrant from here. All right guys, so you can see here I put some washers on the front and back side. I haven't adjusted this guy fully because I want to test the clutch pedal. Um, you know, so I've just tightened this front side down to where the clutch is just starting to feel snug, like there's some pressure against the fork and the throw-up bearing against the clutch forks. So we'll test out the pedal and um, once everything feels good, we'll tighten this down and then we'll put the um, cover plate back on here. So one thing that I did learn with the old cable is that this guy is seized. So whether it snapped inside um, or what happened, I'm not sure. This does look like the, um, the cheaper cable replacement. It's definitely not factory, but I remember seeing this ridged hose um, on another cable that I bought. And I want to say it didn't last very long either. The clutch is blue inside, so it's definitely an aftermarket clutch, probably to hold some of the power that this motor is making. But with that said, at least we got this swapped out. So we're going to see how the clutch pedal feels, and then um, we'll go from there. All right, so we can see here, clutch pedal is okay, but it's not all the way up. So we want to make sure that that pedal comes all the way up to keep the tension on the cable. Definitely higher. Definitely gonna try and get a little bit more of that play out. All right guys, wiring cleaned up, clutch cable chain, uh, battery is connected and charged. Let's see if this thing will start up. Firm clutch pedal. Clutch is working.
Well, other than what seems to be a bit of an exhaust leak, maybe some tuning, maybe the car just hasn't run in a while, but um, it was there idling, did drop down pretty low in the end, but uh, the clutch works engages at a nice medium spot. So happy with the way that that turned out. So now it's just uh, clean up our tools and our mess and um, this thing can go off to its owner down the road. Thank you.